restore our senses, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who enables and equips us to sense the needs of those around us. Amen. Epitha. While you might feel prompted to reply, Gesundheit, or God bless you, this word means be opened. And we read it in the Mark 7 account, which was shared a few minutes ago. It is a wonderful entrance into this text, as I pray each of you would be open to his word and truth this morning through the power of the Holy Spirit. I taught language arts for many years, so the idioms and expressions of our language have long fascinated me. For example, there are several involving senses. Come to your senses. This doesn't make sense. Knock some sense into you. He has more sense than money. No, he has more money than sense. Today I would like to use the five human senses, touch, taste, sight, smell, and hearing, to consider today's text from Mark 7. In verse 31, which begins today's reading, we learn that Jesus had returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. Bible commentators speculate greatly about the length of time this would have taken our Lord on foot, as well as how he had spent that time, which is not fully accounted for in Scripture. Suffice to say, it underscores something I pray that you have recognized for some time. God is God, and we are not. Our human faculties, while intentionally designed and masterfully formed by our Creator God, will never know and understand what God does. I actually find great comfort in that realization, that I worship and serve a God infinitely bigger and stronger than I. And in that regard, when I come to my senses, the senses with which he has equipped me, I am content. The friends of our deaf-mute friend in Mark 7 were not as content, however. Beginning with the sense of touch, we observe fingerprints of their desperation in verse 32, where it reads, they begged him, Jesus, to lay his hand on him, their friend with disabilities. There are two aspects of touch on which I wish to focus. The first, that of the man's friends, reflects Christian community in action. They knew this rabbi had the power to change their friend's life, and they were doing everything possible to introduce him to Jesus. All hands on deck for a touchy request, literally. For in verse 33, our Lord Jesus takes the man aside in privacy from the gathered crowd and touches him directly. Allow me to reiterate that God's ways are not ours. While we may speculate as to why Jesus stuck his fingers in the man's ears and spat on his fingers before putting them into the man's mouth, the biggest lesson is how directly and intimately our Lord's touch is used. To borrow a tagline from the KFC of my childhood, this interaction was finger licking good, savior spit and all. The once deaf and mute man tasted our Lord's fingers in his mouth. What a uniquely satisfying feast outlined in scripture. Some commentators suggest that Jesus did this to help the man himself sense what was happening. For the culture of the day attributed deafness to the ears physically being shut and muteness to the tongue being fastened to the underside of the mouth. Christ's physical touch modeled an unstopping of the ears and a loosening of the tongue, although his power most certainly did not require that physical interaction. Yet in this man's life and in our own, Jesus meets us as individuals who are stuck and bound with individual challenges and circumstances in dire need of a savior. In verse 34, we are reminded that Christ has us in his sight with eyes of care and compassion. The verse reads, And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epitha, that is, be opened. 
His is not a sigh of dismissal, frustration, or disgust. This is a sigh that connotes concern and compassion. Have mercy. The man's deafness was not visible to the eye, yet our Jesus saw the man as he was, needs and all. What infirmity of yours may not be seen directly? Be reminded that God sees you fully and knows the areas of your life and heart that may be healed through his touch. You have the eyes God created for you, but do you have eyes that are your Savior's eyes? Do you see others with compassion and care, or do you sigh in dismissal, frustration, or disgust? This passage underscores his call for us to fix our eyes on him and thereby to see our fellow man with new eyes rather than being short-sighted in our selfish sin. What about the sense of smell? While the text does not mention it directly, what may have been among the scents Jesus detected that day? The stench of sin is always present on this earth. People, then and now, make judgments about individuals with disabilities. There is prejudice, exclusion, isolation. What if he was contagious? What sin did he or his family commit that God would strike him with such an infirmity? Through God's grace and power, may we be restored to our senses and have our spiritual lungs filled by a cleansing breath of the Holy Spirit, so that we may look beyond our own sin and that of others and see instead brothers and sisters in need of his encouragement and care. In verse 36 and 37 we read, And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Hearing and listening. Those are tough skills, aren't they? Ask any professor in this chapel. These are not always things we do naturally or well. Jesus told them to tell no one, and they told everyone. Jesus' great commission implores us to tell everyone, yet we often tell no one. Hymn 826 in our Lutheran Book of Worship reinforces the distinction between hearing and listening. Hark the voice of Jesus crying, who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvests waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he offers thee. Who will answer, gladly saying, here am I, send me, send me. The once deaf and mute man in Mark 7 could not shut up about Jesus, his healer and savior. How much more should we, those called and redeemed by his blood and prompted by the Holy Spirit, utilize our full senses for his kingdom and to his glory? CUW alumnus and pastor Tom Egebrecht wrote, the noise of this world drowns out the voice of God but Jesus opens our ears through his word and says clearly, I love you, I forgive you. Through the power of God's word today, we have each been reminded of God's creative, restorative, and equipping power. Equipped by the Holy Spirit, may we each use the sense God gave us to be about his business rather than stuck in the busyness of this age. He who has ears, let him hear and heed. Amen.